control, talk about some best practices, talk about what they should be thinking about from their business. Man, we got a star-studded affair on a uh, on a Thursday night. It's gonna be fun. I can't wait. We got, you know, we're already 82 and climbing. I'd like to see that. They probably want to know what is the secret of actually uh, kind of making money, the secret of actually doing their business, the secret of this. It's going to be fun because, you know, I, I, I've been thinking about this lately as I've kind of watched the world and watched the world operate. It's kind of nice to sometimes sit back and uh, watch other people, right? And I, I just did this. I just posted something as I was kind of waiting here and, and thinking about this because we were all kind of waiting for nine o'clock because everybody's like, okay, it's the hour to get on and, and watch and talk. And why are there so many people playing for second place today? Like, it is absolutely amazing to me when I sit back and everybody's happy with second place. That means just showing up, just barely, you know, competing. Quit taking, it's like, like taking air from other people, right? Like, if you're just going to just show up it does kind of bother me. I'm watching this today, you know, and watching different things going on. And it is kind of one of those things to sit back and go, you know, why, where is people lost their drive, their commitment, the stuff like that. And it kind of goes back to the same thing. Like, do you let other people kind of take that from you? Or do you kind of like, you know, just sit back and go, oh, this is, this is all I can get to. This is all I'm able to achieve in my life and kind of get to and, and look at. And I, it's kind of one of those things. And that's why I thought about like, even last, uh, when I did something on, I think it was Tuesday night, we were talking about money, right? It was kind of interesting. My, I, my comments blew up. I got a lot of DMs after that. A lot of people were like, hey man, I really appreciate this because, you know, the biggest thing that you were really straight up with me and said, look, it, you know, nobody's really said, if you're not doing $3,000 in sales a month, it's probably time for you to get off the treadmill, find something else to do because you're kind of wasting your time, you know? And it's the truth, right? You got into this to make money. You got into this to be able to figure out how you're going to be able to have an extra thousand bucks in your bank account. You can love what you do. I love the people who go, I just love what I do. I love what I do too. But at the end of the day, I got bills to pay. I got people that are looking at me. I got responsibilities to take care of. I love a lot of shit. But at the one of the days is this, is that, you know, it, it affords me to do the things I love when I make money. Just kind of is what it is. And nobody really likes that straight talk because a lot of people are so afraid about having that conversation when it comes about money, right? And it comes back to the same thing. It's like, when are people going to actually start stretching themselves again? You know, I just don't, you know, if it's with my kids, if it's with the people that surround me, um, you know, it goes back to the same thing. It's like who I surround myself with, you know, if they sit back and go, oh, you know, this is all you're supposed to do, you know, and don't want to actually see me get better progress or be able to go for more, then I'm hanging out with the wrong friends. Every one of them are like, man, you should be able to go out there and 10X, 20X or 30X. And that goes back to the same things that we're doing in business, right? And I think that that's an important discussion tonight because we're going to get into best practices and we're going to get into best practices with three really amazing people that are in business. But if you're somebody that's brand new, you just kind of started in this business, you know, I want to see you drop something in the chat. If you're brand new, you're sitting here going, you know what, I'm just trying to get my business off and launching. I want to get to that point where, you know, I'm not playing for second place. I want to get to that point where I'm actually making some real money. I want to get to that point where, you know, I got into this and I'm like, you know what, I am either a, maybe you're in kind of like what I call remodeling phase. If you're in a remodeling phase, go ahead and put that down because it's okay. You can remodel your house, right? A lot of people remodel a bedroom. A lot of people remodel a bathroom. A lot of people remodel stuff in their life. And then at the end of the day, you know what? They're just like, because they need uh, something to refresh, something to be done. Maybe they don't like it. Or maybe you're in a position where kind of like take it to the car analogy, right? You know, my mom, when I first got my first car, I got an Escort L. It was maroon. The L did not stand for luxury, okay? It did not. But you might sit back and say, I want to upgrade. If you're in an upgrade phase of your life, that's cool too. You can upgrade it. I'm down with that as well. But to sit back tonight and listen, because you could be one of those people, if you're brand new, cool, drop it in. I want to see if you are. If you're somebody remodeling, drop it in. I'm remodeling my business. If you're somebody like, look, I'm trying to upgrade my life right now because I'm not real happy with it. I've been stuck at making you know a couple thousand dollars a month in the business and I want to kind of up it. I want to kind of go from the, you know, maybe the basic, you know, let's call it like, I just bought my, my daughter. What do they call that? That Hyundai, not Hyundai. I, I, I can't remember what the heck it is, but anyway, it's one of those cars, but there's all this, it's the one that says the tell you ride. She got the one that's below the tell you ride. I said, when you start paying for your own car, you can get the tell you ride. Cause it's on your payment schedule. That's called upgrade, right? That's like when we fly, I sit in first class, you sit in, in economy is because I've already put my time in to upgrade. They all want to sit there, but I'm like, Hey, when you start paying those bills, you start putting those air miles on your time, then you can upgrade. 
That's how it works. Dad's put his time in. You got to put your time in. So if you're in those in those phases tonight, we're going to talk through that because I think it's going to be important because we've got Andrew Burns that's going to be joining us tonight too from Chicago, Illinois, outside that area. She's done a fantastic job with her business. We also have Jenny Flickinger that's going to be joining us from Cedar Rapids as well. And yes, people, there is a lot of business in Iowa because there is not a lot going on. But I will tell you right now, it is spicy. That place is absolutely spicy because people are sitting back and they're going, who would I want to party with? Yes, I'm going to party with Jenny. I'm going to party with a lot. There's a ton of rock stars in that area, by the way, just FYI. We also have Kayla Slice that's going to be joining us. Kayla's got four years in the business. Jenny's got 12. Andrew's got 14. We also, she's from Columbia, South Carolina, been rocking out her business. Um, all of these women, by the way, have uh, traveled, trained, went around the country, been able to speak to uh, a large number of people, also have uh, orchestrated not only successful businesses, but also have helped uh, other people start successful businesses, ramp up successful businesses, remodel, upgrade, all the things that we've talked about, which is going to be important kind of as we jump in this tonight, because it's going to be kind of fun and exciting. So uh, first of all, thank you guys for joining tonight. Exciting. I'm excited for this. All right, let's let's jump right into this because I think it's kind of fun. So we're we're gonna get into this because uh it's gonna be good, you know, and and I think it's important when we start going into different topics. And and again, through this tonight, if you have something that's on your topic list and you're like, man, I really hope that they address that or they talk about that or they show some sort of time around it, I want you to pop it in the chat because I think it's also pretty important uh that you do that and kind of get uh get that stuff going. So um, I'm going to go into this pretty quickly, start kind of getting here right away. So um, I'm going to talk about the, I'm going to talk about, first of all, people that are kind of in the business that are brand new, because there seems like there's a lot of people in there. And uh, I'm going to start off with Jenny tonight, kind of asking some questions around that. And, and, uh, and again, I'm going to get to each one of them to kind of ask what their thoughts are around best practices about some of the things that they're doing. Uh, but Jenny, I'm going to kick it off with you tonight. If you're cool with that, are you down? Yeah, Totally. All right. So let's talk about this. So, you know, let's talk about some of the ways that people can get moving right away in their business. I think that's the most important thing, because I think even if they're remodeling, some people are like, they've been stuck. They've been like trying to figure it out. You know, there's, you know, there's all kinds of different things that people are trying to, are going through, uh, you know, trying to figure out exactly where it is that they are. So what are some of the things that you would talk to uh, for somebody that wants to get things moving right away, newer people? So I'm totally all about the training that we have set up. You need to go through that orientation right away. Don't wait because you guys know life happens and then, oh, I'm going to do it Tuesday. And then something comes up and then something else comes up. And then it's always like a month later and you're like, oh my gosh, I haven't even started or trained yet. Do it right away. Sign up when you like, no, you can do it. You guys are already all in. Let's do it. You're here. You made the commitment don't wait, like get started right away. And the second thing would be like, do your launch party right away. Even if you're nervous, like I was so nervous to do my first party. I handmade index cards. I literally had like a, like a puke bucket hidden behind a chair because I was so nervous. Yeah. And I was like, I did not have to use it if anybody cares, but I didn't have to use it, but I had one just in case, cause I was so nervous. So don't let your yeah. nerves get the best of you guys. Like just jump in, do the training and get through it. It's kind of amazing because a lot of people do kind of sit on the sidelines until they've actually went through every cue card, every video, every whatever. And by that time, you know, you're sitting back, it's kind of like, you know, they're, they kind of almost in a way either uh, talk themselves out of this, overstudy their self out of this, uh, go, I can't do it because it just, you know, there's too many things that are going on, you know, it, it is important to get that. And it, you say launch, you know, launch your business or get right out and do it. Uh, a lot of people might not know what that, th that kind of entails. And, and that is a pretty simple thing that we overcomplicate. And somebody today, if they said launch their business, I bet all three of you could come up with something different, but Jenny, what would you say to somebody like, where would be the first place that you would go out there and launch to not have to you know, if I had my own puke bucket, I probably wouldn't be in my house because I can run to my bathroom or whatever, maybe not somebody else's. But what, what would you say to somebody that's getting ready to launch? Where would, what would you tell them to do? I say, find somebody that is the closest to you. My first party was my mother-in-law. 
my, uh, one of my really good friends, her little sister, because she wouldn't have one, but her little mm-hmm. sister would. And then yep. a coworker from like three jobs before, like hit up a couple of people that, you know, are fun and that it's going to be successful. Don't talk to your, the girl that, you know, that nobody really likes her or has any friends, like set yourself up and put yourself in front of people that other people want to be around too. So you're taking off right from the beginning with it. I think that's important. I think that there's always the people and everybody's like, oh, nobody wants to have this. Nobody wants to have it unless you ask, right? And I think that's the big kind of aha moment for a lot of business owners is they've never really had to ask anybody for anything because most most people have never worked for themselves. They've never had to kind of go ask for that, right? So things have been told to them. They've had to do this. And it is important that you understand, pick somebody that you know, that's going to be, you know, have your back, have your kind of ride or die, uh, somebody that's going to be there with you. If it's a family member, it's a friend, you know, even if it's yourself inviting people over, I know that's what my mom did with her first launch party, launch her business which was, hey, I got to get there. I talked about this last week and you guys could all agree with this because AB, I'm coming to you next. But a lot of people that we talk to have the exact same thing as uh, when I talk to them, they need to make money right now. It's not even an option. Like they actually, they need to make money like two weeks ago, two months ago. Most people procrastinate too long. And then all of a sudden, the, because the money has pressured them so hard or so bad that literally they start panicking, right? Because they're like, I should have done it, I should have done it, should have done it. And then they jump into this business and they kind of paralyze themselves uh, because they're like, they're afraid if I mess up, I'm not going to make any money. That is the biggest misnomer myth bullshit that that's out there. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And, and, and it's true because I, I just watch that all the time. You know, people that need to make it, and that's why I say the quickest way to make money is by making sure that you're in front of somebody. If it's somebody's or somebody, one-on-one, whatever it might be to be able to be easy, I think it's important. AB, I got a question for you. I'm coming to you because I want to know this because I think it's important. You know, when you look at this, some of the, the of the people on here, just by reading the comments, seeing the things that are going on, um, there's a lot of them that have zero sales, right? They, you know, they have not uh, done much or uh, they're launching or re- relaunching their business, right? So, Andrea, it's kind of like, in my mind, I look at this and say to somebody that's got zero sales or uh, that they're launching or relaunching, what is some of the advice for them to, to kick off, to have a good start, to kick off, to be able to, you know, create a list, cold call, whatever it might be, uh, to get some business on the books. There we go. Sorry. Um, so my tried and true every single time that I feel like, and I've been 14 years in business and there's been numerous times where I feel like I have to relaunch myself. Um, but my tried and true is because As we go throughout the business, you're going to meet so many people. My favorite worksheet to pull out every single time without fail is the who do you know worksheet. Um, It's really simple. I mean, because if you sit down and you try to think of people that you want to reach out to, it's hard to think outside of your immediate circle, right? So that worksheet helps you think about people from your kids' sports, people from your kids' school, people you met, you know out at the grocery store, like that list helps you think outside of that, of the box, which I love that worksheet. And I've, I've referenced back to that numerous times. And every time that I fill it out, it's new names each time. Um, I'm also a really, really, really big fan of the 100 no's challenge, um, where you go Mm -hmm. for the no, um, because that's huge when it comes to running a business like this, you have to get used to rejection. So that going for the no worksheet helps you kind of build up a little bit of a a thicker skin so that when people say no, you don't take it personal, but you keep going because you know that yes is coming. That's the goal of the 100 no's worksheet is to just get used to hearing no. And then once you get your yes, it's like the biggest celebration because you've been hearing no so much. So huge fan of the 100 no's worksheet, but my always, I'm always going to do a a party at my house. Always. I'm always going to host a party at my house every single time that I feel like business is slow. And you might even feel like, oh, I just did one last month. No, I'll do it every month if I have to, because the people that couldn't make it last month, they're going to make it this month or the following month. So hosting your own party is always going to be where I, where I start, where I jump start. Okay. So I'm going to play devil's advocate because I see a lot of people on, especially the ones that are re kind of launching their businesses, right? Because they're probably going, 
you know, I've done that list. I, you know, I have, you know, the hundred no's, they all sit back and say the same thing, right? Like, you know, go for the no was where I started when I was in business. The first, probably one of the first, no, Mary Kay way was the first book I read when I got into the industry, right? Cause I was like, okay, what's this whole thing? Why do women want to get together? I, I don't understand. Like, I just want to go pick up what I got to buy and get out. Like, I really don't want to have a conversation. And, you know, like my buddies, if we get yeah. together, we're probably going to, you know, we're not going to buy shit, right? That was just, you know, not the thing. So I start reading Mary Kay way. Then I read Go for the No. I read Eat That Frog, you know, several books that I had kind of looked at. The, the Go for the No, everybody is so afraid of failing today that going for the No is almost paralyzed for people. Like the 100 No Challenge, right? It's kind of funny that, that to most people will just absolutely crush their egos because they feel that that once they get the first no, they get the first whatever, they literally just say, fuck it, I'm done. I mean, that's kind of what the problem is. How, how does somebody get to their, 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 the thick skin, you know, especially got a lot of new people, right? Because a lot of new people aren't really used to getting no's, right? Maybe they get no's that the other thing from their kids, like, no, I'm not going to clean my room. No, I'm not going to do that, mom. I don't know. I want to do my homework. How do you, how do you kind of coach yourself through that every time? Um, and what do you tell somebody that's kind of brand new to kind of get through that? Um, so my best answer to that very specific question is that I meet every no with gratitude still. Um, so every yep. single time someone says no, I respond every single time. Thank you so much for taking the time to respond. It's something that simple because you're leaving a lasting impression on them. If they say no and you don't even say thank you back to them, that leaves a nasty taste in their mouth. Oh, she only reached yep. out to me because of blah, blah, blah. But I meet every no with gratitude. And I feel like that's the part that keeps that little bit of that separation there where now they're not just looking at me as, oh, another direct seller in my inbox or whatever. So anytime I hear no, even if it's a, a follow-up of a, you know, did you want to add this to your order, whatever, every no, I respond with gratitude. And I feel like that's the part that kind of keeps you a little bit softer, but still makes you look really good as a business owner. Okay. Let's talk about this really quick. And then we're going to get to Ginny on this. How do you sip, how do you track and go back? You, you know, somebody says no to you. How, what is the time frame that you would go back to? Because there's going to be people that, I mean, people were living busy lives, right? They're very hectic. There's a lot of stuff that's happening, uh, especially, you know, people, you know, they've got schedules, right? There's things that are constantly going on. Um, how do you keep track of that? No, right? Somebody says no to you. Do you have a, do you funnel them into some other, like in a, in a couple of weeks, a couple of months? Uh, do you drop them in an email list? Do you, you know, do you market to them? How does that go? Because some people just will just mark them off the list. I, I feel like I have a checklist every day. Right. And some people are like, oh, I called Bridget. She said, no, I called Betty. She said, no, Charlotte said, no, like it's the, people are not a checklist, right? Like what do you do with them once that kind of happens that they do say no? Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm an old school pen and paper gal. Me too. So <laughs> when someone says no, um, my response is usually going to be somewhere along the lines of, you know, obviously, thank you for responding, but I'm going to ask them, you know, can I follow back up with you? Is there a time that works better for you? Um, or can I reach back out to you next month? So my question is always next month so that yep. they have an idea and I get permission to reach out to them again, because there's a huge part of the puzzle is getting that permission to reach back out. And it's as simple as just saying, can I reach back out to you next month? Yep. And I literally use a notebook and I yep. write and I highlight and I pen and that's my system. You know what? And here's the thing. And, and there is no perfect system. Like, I love it because it's your system. You have it. I remember watching my mom. She had those yellow notebooks. I have white ones like this. I mean, she had thousands and thousands of these and it was just name after name of who she called, who she contacted. You know, some people are like, wow, man, I can't believe you guys are talking about pen and paper. Everything I do is on my phone. Cool. Whatever way you do it, it's your system. But I do believe the following up, coming yeah. back to them, making sure that it's not kind of a you know, a never going back to them. It's not a checklist. I, it's like, I didn't pick up the toilet paper at the, at the grocery store. This is a person. So people have relationships. Bottled waters are things we pick up, you know, toilet paper is things we pick up at the, the mall. So coming to that, Jenny, you know, the same kind of question, what are some of the things that you would do to kind of like make sure somebody's getting off to that kind of fast start or relaunching their business? So I think kind of a fun way to get sales in is come up with a specific goal and not necessarily like a retail goal, like what we talk about a lot of the time, but like a goal in the way of products. Like 
I'm going to sell two main attraction, a six pack of shave cream, a couple miracle oils, choose the items themselves. Make sure you're picking items that are popular and that people just know what our shave cream is. They just know what a bottle of O or Amp is. Picking something like that, because if you post about it or talk about it, they already know. They don't need mm-hmm. some fancy explanation about what the product is. They already know. So you can make a post, use something, one of the graphics from corporate that's already pretty and just kind of do that to get those sales coming in. And I think it's kind of an easier way because sometimes we always pick like a number to reach. We'll pick a certain amount of items, you know, and give a little discount. Don't be scared to like give a tiny little bit away because once you make those first couple sales, you're going to feel more confident. You're going to be like, oh, holy crap, I just did it. Like, yeah, I mean, I feel like when you're new, that's so important to like have a little milestone and a win. I, I, I totally agree. And that goes back to setting down, you know, we were talking about this in uh, Philadelphia last week. And I just said to somebody, you know, you got to know what it is that you are going after, right? Like you have to define this. It goes back to like, if somebody's in business today, I'm defining that, hey, my first party was going to take place or my first event's going to take place or my first connection is going to take place and making sure you have that timeline that that is that is set for yourself. Um, you know, somebody, when I was talking the other day, most people want to work more than 20 hours in a, in a week, you know, doing their business. And that's the case Then you know, everybody that's, you know, kind of watching or whatever should have those two to four parties in a, in a month or events getting together. A lot of people want, you know, you know, I, I talked about this the other day it, today, nobody wants you in their house more than a couple hours, right? you got to be able to be mindful of that. So that's, that's how people today can be a lot smarter with 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 their scheduling, with the time frame, by setting goals, setting time limits, knowing that they're going to invest this because they got busy schedules today. Um, Kayla, speaking of this, how do you get your schedule kind of filled when you first start? Because that is, you know, something I've watched your classes. I've seen the way you've trained and what you've talked about. Um, you know, how, what is your schedule looking like today? I mean, like when you think about, you know, your parties your or your events or your one-on-ones, how often are you doing those? Because a lot of people don't know that you have 24 kids. And I think that that's an important thing for everybody on this to know is that you are juggling um, you know, you guys had to go buy a small bus, I think, to cart all the kids around. <laughs> yeah, we did. So I want to talk to the ladies that say, I don't have friends. Like I, everybody's saying, you know, get your first party from the people that you know. I had friends, but I did Mary Kay, 31, Leah Sophia, Pampered Chef. When I started this, you couldn't pay me to ask another friend or family member to buy something from me. Okay, so I literally and I had just moved to a new state. So I set up my party in my house and then I knocked on my neighbor's door and said, hey, you want to come to a pure romance party? And they're like, oh, new girl in town. Let's go see her house. And I had five people show up. They came in my house and I was like, oh, yeah, it's me. (laughs) That was my first party. I was too scared to ask them to book a party, play a book. I didn't even play a booking game. So then they left, the last person left out of my house, sat down on the couch and I was like, now what? I have no idea what to do. I'm back in square one. I have no parties. I know you've, everybody has seen these. Uh This is what started my business. These are nail salon bins. What, and it just says, I've put these everywhere. Convenience stores, nail salons, it, the grocery store, anywhere that has a table that they let me put this. And it just says $50 gift card, which is going to be your hostess rewards to book a party with me. I picked one up today and there's people that sign up all. This is what does my business even to this day. This is how I book my parties. I do 10 to 15 parties every single month. And this is how I do most of my parties. Like if I, that's my first 14 parties was from nail salon bins after my launch. It it, it kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy because, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, just, you know, they go back to like, oh man, I'm going to post a, a post or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to post something on TikTok. I'm going to do some crazy video. It's amazing that, you know, um, things like, you know, mail actually still works. People still open it. Right. Uh, people still got to go to like salons. People still got to like, 
it's kind of amazing that the world that we live in is this like very tech driven world, but a lot of people are still doing things in a world that literally is, is not as hard as we all make it to be. And I think that that's an important thing to, to think about and keeping the schedule kind of filled is, is an important thing, you know, but you also do one thing too. You also are setting very realistic goals with yourself because, you know, and, and I joke a little bit about having as many kids as you have, but you have a very large family, right? Uh, you're probably been pulled in multiple different directions. This is the one thing I feel like uh, as entrepreneurs or business owners that people run into all the time. It is so easy to catch ourselves and put ourselves in excuses on why we cannot do business or why things don't fit into our time, our schedule. Everything today that we read is about like this whole thing about, you know, space and boundaries and time and blah, 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 blah. And we put all these boundaries on ourselves or put all these things around ourselves and then we don't make enough money and then we are mad at ourselves and we're not happy. And and we, you know, like there's all these things that happen. How are you juggling that with a family to do 15 parties in a month? People are probably going, you're crazy. How are you able to do that? I'm a strong believer on you have time for what's important to you. You make time for what's important to you. So did you eat today? Did you watch two hours of Yellowstone today? I mean, you have those things that are important to you that you do. Make this important realize that you don't have to be in this business for 10 years before you make life-changing money. Yep. I, I totally, I, I am a hundred percent like, you know, it's, uh, it's funny. I follow all you guys on, you know, Instagram, Instagram and see your different lives. You're still able to be able to commit. I watch AB. She's got kids that are in, in different sports. You know, if it's, uh, if it's basketball, if it's football, if it's whatever it might be, some of them have, they have little small businesses, all that kind of stuff. And like, even myself, right. You have to, you have to figure out how to make things important. I'm running a business, but I'm also, you know, helping coach. I was at Max's football game tonight. I just work early in the morning and work late into the evening, but I do the things that are important, right? Like I'm able to, with this business that we're able to have our time but again it's that we have to make time for these important tasks activities that are that are going on i do love the fact that this does give us a lot of flexibility but most people don't you know see it that way because they're like oh you know it's you know time out of my schedule no it's how do you commit to it right so which leads me to my next kind of discussion is right now if you sit back and think about it uh and andrew i'm going to go to you first right which of these channels right that you think about and we got a lot of channels is it parties sales personal sales one-on-one that's kind of fueling your business, you know, and fueling you right now. I think that's the biggest thing I like to find out is kind of where do you sit with your business? How has it kind of transformed? Where do you kind of fit everything into? And by the way, if you're in the chat too, I'd love to see where you're kind of, what are you fueled by the most right now in your business? What fuels you? What gets you excited? What's the thing that is your happy place? Amy, what, what, what is yours? I am so happy to be back to in-home parties. Like I cannot even explain how good it feels to be back in front of women. I can only stare at a computer screen or a phone screen for too long. It's just not the same connection. But right now I've, I, I had the hardest time getting parties to book. That did not mean that I was not still busting my ass working my business. I still found mm -hmm. other ways to make money. I still found ways to sell product, but couldn't get people to book and hold a party. And last month, well, two months ago, it just kind of started picking up and now I have my full schedule this month and oh my God, I just, I'm so happy. And, and everybody in my house can see it. They can see the difference in me just because I got to go to work. I'm gone. But <laughs> being in front of women and connecting with them. And then when you're done doing your thing, the way that they fill you up afterwards has been everything that I didn't know I needed. So in-home parties is exactly where I'm filling my cup right now. It's how I'm fueling my business. And then of course, I'm still working my outside sales, working my VIP group. I'm still making my VIP group work for me. I'm not over the top yep. doing too many things at one time. I'm doing enough so that I'm making the money that I need to make and also making that, you know, that little extra to be comfortable. But without a doubt, in-home parties, I, I did not know how much I missed that setting. It's kind of fun because it is that kind of instant gratification, right? And and a lot of things like when you think about other channels, other things, yeah. it just it takes a little longer that drive. Um, I, I agree. There's some people that are very connection driven, and I'm one of those. I know you're one of those. I you know I, I like to be around people. I like to have that connection. 
Um, you know, and that, and that's an important piece. So getting back, doing those, I love the fact that you are seeing some of that. And, and, and it's interesting. People ask me who's kind of doing well right now. It is those that have figured out how to rekindle connection, re go back into, into the space where people want to get together. So, you know, for those that are out there and a lot of you that are launching your business, and if you heard me speak last, uh, this Tuesday, I did talk about the, the fastest, quickest way. And if you ask most people, uh, that are out there in business, what they're going to tell you is that they made their first real money and they continue to make a lot of their real money on actually the connections with five, four, two, one person. So it is important. Uh, now, Jenny, I know you're, you've got a kind of a kind of a mixed bag of stuff that you're doing. And I think it's good because you're kind of going from that omni channel, which I love that about our business. It gives you flexibility to do a bunch of different stuff because you do own your business. You do kind of have to figure out ways that work in your schedule for your family. What are the things that you're doing that are kind of filling your cup right now? So I've definitely parties like Andrea, because I like it. It's fun. It makes me feel like you go, you leave your house and you're kind of rushed or cranky, but then you leave the party and you have 700 bucks in your pocket. You're just in a better mood. Like it's just yeah. good. So I'm definitely a party person. Um, I've done about 70 parties this year. Um, with that though, I still oh. will say 60 to 70% of my business is out like business, not from a party follow up outside VIP group. I mean, still over a hundred thousand dollars of my sales this year is just following up and running fun sales that I have such a loyal client base. And by doing all of these things with them and staying in contact with them, you know, they met you face to face at a party and they enjoyed you. So now they want to keep shopping with you. So I do a lot of sales that way um, too, for sure. But I'm old school, Chris. I still do emails snail mail. Yeah, no. I text, I do all yes. the things. Like I hit them up all the ways. I literally sat through a conference. There was a conference the other day and they were talking about continuously, like all these new ways of marketing. Right. And TikTok is a very big platform as everybody knows, but the, the one thing that you have to understand is TikTok is now becoming more of a mainstream product for bigger companies, things like that. So TikTok is becoming a little bit tougher for the, the, the smaller business owner. But it's kind of interesting because what they all had said, which we all sleep on, and I was one of those people, by the way, FYI, it was like, all oh, email's dead, email's dead, email's dead. Email's definitely not dead. Email is still one of those the most um, uh, kind of conversion high type of businesses. And if it's not a conversion, it's still keeping that kind of that business at front and center with clients today. I think too many of us sleep on understanding that that's important. So I, I agree with that because I do know that you have a very solid clientele, uh, but you've done a good job of giving them value uh, by making sure not value just because of deals and specials, but value that you're able to add to them, which I think is very important. You keep them up to date on all new products like this weekend, like tomorrow, we have the dessert trio that's going to be launching red velvet whip that's going to be launching, uh, you know, got new products, you're also probably keeping them up to speed on things that are happening in the biz, which is also important. Um, all of those are good. So Kayla, I'm going to go to you. What are the things that kind of are the, you're doing kind of fill in your cup right now? Uh, where do you kind of feel your business in this, in the sector of parties, you know, personal one-on-ones kind of social VIP groups, where are you at? I love my in-home parties. That is my, that is just what fills me. That is where I feel the most needed. These, I have information that everybody needs and I need to get it to them. And mm -hmm. we have quality products that sell themselves. You just have to let everybody know that you sell it. And yep. um, I, I, my goal every day is I text or call five people every single day. And it's not about pure romance. So I will, as I'm going through Facebook, you know, the endless rabbit hole, somebody's dog died somebody's kid graduated, they're having surgery, mom passed away. That's what I'm texting about. Hey, congratulations on this. I just wanted to tell you, I'm so sorry that your dog died. I know how that feels. You're, it's those little touches. That's not like, you want to buy something? You want to buy something? It's those yep. little touches. And then, you know, as, as the conversation goes, you know, oh, how have you been? Crazy busy with my pure romance party, but so you're plugging in without saying, buy something, buy something. 
but it always kind of turns around and it might be a week. It might be next month, but they're like, yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah. And here they come, here they come. Yep. It's kind of interesting. I read the comment uh, from Veronica. Uh, she says, uh, you know, she's getting very little interaction in her group. And that was a comment that came into this is that there are more people watching what's happening than kind of interaction what's happening, right? Less and less people are putting their hearts, less and less people are putting their comments. It's really a source of like, it's a marketing, it's eyeballs on it. That's what it is. Um, and some people, you know, don't understand that they're like, you know, man, nobody comment, nobody really looks at the, at, at what's going on. They're seeing it, right? They might not interact with it, but they're seeing it. Um, it it's kind of interesting because, you know, you see everything that people kind of uh, look at their business, go, oh my gosh, I'm not getting anything. You're not getting looks. You don't know who's looking at it. It's like a billboard, right? Like, People that are driving down the, the highway, they have billboards. You just sometimes don't know who saw the billboard because there is nobody that sits back and goes, oh, I like that billboard or click or whatever. What they hope is that there's eyes on that billboard, that there's impressions on that billboard, that people were driving by. And people are driving by every day going like this. They might not interact with it, but they see it. And I think that that's an important thing. Uh, so don't give up on that, Veronica. I think it's an important thing to uh, to know. All right. All right. So let's talk about this. And this is for anybody. And if you're at this position right now, if you're sitting back going, oh my gosh, I do not have anything on my schedule for the rest of October or November. Um, a couple of things you should be thinking about. We're going to kind of get into that because I think that's important. Um, and, and I think that this happens to a lot of people, by the way. Uh, life happens, what I call it, right? Or, you know, they're just like, oh my gosh, I haven't been as focused. And I always find it that they get focused when they need to get focused, right? Not when they, you know, should be getting focused. Like when people are in the want and they need and they need and they need and they need, it becomes like everything becomes really, really difficult at that point. Everything is a, you know, oh my God, I can't believe nobody's booking. Oh my God, everything is magnified by 10X, right? Let's talk about this. You wake up tomorrow morning, right? And you guys, I know that this is, you know, maybe it happened to you, maybe not. Um, but you imagine you wake up and for some reason you have absolutely no parties, zero. There's nothing on your books. There's nothing going on. You're like, holy shit. You know, you got rent payment, you got, you know, bills, you got kids activities, you got all this other stuff. And you're looking at your bank account going, oh my gosh, I have $5,000 in my bank account, but I have $6,000 in actual bills that need to be paid. Um, how do you start re-getting that schedule back up and going? How do you sit back and go, okay, I've got to get really, really focused because I need to make money. And we know that typically that if you have not done parties in a while, it's going to be really tough to reheat those. Um, it's, it's, it's better to kind of keep, even if you're going to do a party schedule and you're an eight person party schedule, I'm cool if you drop down to two on a month. But if you go from eight to doing zero, it's very problematic because you're not in front of people to get the next one on the book. So Jenny, what are some of the things that you would do or suggest uh, in that kind of world uh, to just say, hey, I'm, I'm, I've got, I got to figure this out. So I'll say for you girls, this is maybe if you're in that remodel phase, um, you know, you already have a couple names on your list and things like that. You know, you, you have a couple customers. For me, I I love Pure Shop. I'm all in on this app, okay? And I can pull a report that shows me who's bought, how many times they've ordered with me, how much they've spent with me throughout the year. I would be pulling that and being like, okay, who are my top people? And I would be specific with my messaging to try to get them to order. So I'm going to go to the people first that like already love what we have. I'm not trying to like it's not a cold contact, right? Like it's already somebody that loves the things and already shops with me. So um, that would be the first thing I probably do. The second thing is I would probably like take a shower <laughs> and then <laughs> I would put on some makeup and I would go out into the world um, and like see people I know. Like I wouldn't be like going out like completely new because I think if it is like a warm contact, you know, maybe talking a little bit longer to the preschool teacher, maybe you swing by the pharmacy or I don't know, whatever, but I'm way more charming in person than a Facebook message. So I know yeah. if I'm in front of them, it's harder for them to tell me no. So I'm probably like going out into the world a little bit. Love it. Andrea. <laughs> 
You know, it's going to sound like um, I'm repeating the same thing over and over again, but this was what I did when I needed to get my stuff back in order um, yep. a couple of months ago. I hosted my own party and I reached out to people specifically that I knew that I wanted to come. I didn't just, I mean, I did put an event on Facebook and kind of left it open to people, but not everyone is going to see that. So I did send specific messages and my message was very genuine. Hey, I'm struggling right now getting parties. So I'm going to do my own. You know, do you want to come check out my new party format? I totally lied. I didn't do anything new. It was the same party. They still loved it. Um, but what I will say, and I got to give a shout out to Kimberly Buck. I started to say this at the end of my party when everyone is just sitting there like, oh my God, I love this. This was great. But what I've been saying now and what's been helping me book parties is I'm saying, um, so at my party, because I was the hostess, thank you so much for coming. And you know, when you shop with me, you support me. But the longevity of my business relies on in-home parties. Yep. That has literally helped me book so many parties at parties it blows my mind. It's just adding that simple line in there that the longevity of my business relies on in-home parties. Because I think people think when they buy one thing from you, they're supporting you, but making $10 on a bottle of coochie is not paying my mortgage. So I need you to get your 10 girlfriends together so we can party because my business relies on it. I, I, my mind has been blown just adding in that one sentence. But I will say the first time I said it, I was like super nervous about it did not know how it was going to go over. But when I said it, the way that their faces just kind of melted, like, oh, okay, let me see your calendar. Like I booked four parties from my in-home party. Yep. That, and, that, and that's the truth. I think that, that it's, it, it's so exciting. It's, it's interesting because how our excitement, right? Like, I mean, tomorrow is a new drop, right? We have a new product, a new whatever. Um, it's, it's interesting that the more excited, I was just sitting there talking tonight, you know, a bunch of people were asking like, Hey, you know what? We're thinking about getting our friends together. You know, we're doing a, an event, you know, to, for a charity. I'm like, Oh, cool. They're like, is, you know, is there any way, like, you know, what do you guys have that's new? I'm like, Oh my God like right now. And they always ask, it's amazing. You guys probably get the same thing. What is the newest product that you guys have? Like how many more, like, what do you guys have that's new? And I'm always like, oh my God, there's always something new. And then they always want to know, well, how are these products picked? And I'm like, we are the research development committee. There is that, that pure romance. And you could be my own personal research and development. We can get those products for you for free, but here's what you're going to have to do. I'm not just going to give them to you for a charity. I will make a basket of stuff, but I need something from you. I need you to host a party for me. I need you to have your friends over because this is how I make money to be able to give things away to your charities, to the different things that you're doing. They're like, oh, cool. And it's just that it is the ask, right? It is to making sure that you had the excitement about it. So Kayla, what about you? Because I know that you always have some cool stuff when you're talking about getting people and booking. If I wake up and there and that is my situation, then I'm going to incentivize people. I will give you something free of your choice if you bring me two people, two people that's going to order from me, three people that's going to order from me, because everybody that they bring me is going to be people that I do not know. And then they're coming to me to order, and then I am going to grab a hold to them and I will book a party from somebody to get that spider web going again. So that's that's what I would do. You know, and I think I think it's important to think about this because there was a couple of things tonight, right? Like Danielle was in the chat and she said, I want to do a party, but I feel like I don't have enough inventory, right? Like that's a big, uh, you know, kind of fear for people because people are like, you know, one, I'm not going to lie to you, Danielle. I'm going to be really honest. I'm going to let them give you the, the stuff. I'm statistic based. I'm just going to be up front with you. Okay. I would not be worried about going to a party with no inventory. That's how everybody starts. It doesn't matter. And there are people that have ran their inventory low and then they got to rebuild their inventory, right? That's just part of what it is. But at the end of the day, right? Like not doing a party because you don't have it, that's not a good enough excuse, right? I think that, meaning I don't think that's an excuse for you, but don't worry about it. Don't get upset about it because that's how you are going to build your business is by going and doing that first one. Now, statistically speaking, the more that you have, the, the, the right amount of inventory you have, right? is important because people do want things fast. They do want them things the, the night of the show. They are going to be a little bit more like, oh, you know what? You know, I would love to take that. You were, it was funny. They love to hear it. They love to be able to try it. Um, 
And so therefore they do see about a 30% increase on the actual retail of that party. It still is a ability for you to win at that party and to be able to build, but I would give them the question. I'll ask one of the panel what their thoughts are, but I would not be scared of or, or being nervous of not having enough. I'd be, you know, it, that's where everybody starts. I don't know who wants to take that, but I think that's a that's a really big uh, question for a lot of people or a fear or something that they have to overcome. I didn't have inventory the first five years I was in business. So mm -hmm. from 2011 till January of 2016, I had no inventory, like zero. And I still sold over $100,000 every single year I was in business. Every full year, I still sold $150,000, $180,000 with no inventory, none, nothing. I had some prize baskets. So like, yeah. don't get in your head about it. It's definitely hustle, how you present it how, you know, they're used to waiting, but man, I'll tell you what, I do have inventory now and a lot of it because it isn't so much the money for me, but it's the time. I don't have to spend time packing up orders. Like I'm sure for Kayla, if she has a hundred kids, you know, like she doesn't have time to spend four hours a day packing up her 18 parties a month or 15 parties a month. Like I can't even imagine how many hours that would really take. So you know, you kind of have to weigh that too. Yeah. And that, and that's, that is a definite, I don't know if anybody else wants to kind of chime in on that. I think it's very good. And Kayla, go ahead. I'll say um, they're not expecting it. Whenever you walk into a party and you say, oh, I have inventory. They're like, oh, we can take it home. They're not expecting that. You know, that's just a little bonus, but you will find really fast that women are impulse buyers. And if they can just, oh, add that to my bag, add that to my bag, you're going to want to have that inventory. So you're going to want to start stocking up a little bit, but don't feel like I can't do a party without inventory because they are not expecting you to have everything. All right, let's let's talk about this too, because I know there are a lot of people that are out there um, that are looking at their business and saying kind of, you know, hey, I I'm new. Um you know, they haven't talked about kind of, you know, digital, they haven't really talked about this. A lot of this has been party, 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 right? And, you know, I'm a firm, I'm a firm believer in got to fi figure out what it is that you want to do with your business. Um, for me, I know that I love to be able to have the event side of it, because that is where most people will get that kind of instant gratification where they're able to sell a product, they're able to deliver a product, they're able to kind of see that transaction happen in front of them, and they're able to feel like they have money in their bank account. It's almost like it is kind of, it is like having a job, right? You go to work, you have that time where you you clock in, you clock out, then you get your money for that, that time frame that you work, right? When we talk about digital, right, and that's still a, a piece that I truly believe it, it is a longer term build, even for any company that's out there right now, everybody is trying to figure it out. The number one job that's in the country right now that's the most kind of sought after job is kind of an e-commerce specialist, right? That's everybody's trying to figure it out because the customer's fickle. The, the where to go buy is fickle. Should you be on Facebook? Should you be on TikTok? You know, how do you convert from Instagram? How do you do all of these things, right? And for a lot of people, they do want that side of the business. They just, they do because they think it's an easier side. To me, I think it's a tougher side. However, I do think it's a necessity for any business that you have uh, a portion of your revenue coming from that because that in some regards um, is, a, is an area that you can continue to get residual business from, residual business from, and being out in front of them, that billboard. So I know that wasn't a question that was kind of on the scope tonight, but I do want to talk about that because um, I've had a lot of people saying, I just want to do digital. And I'm always like, I would rather you have a balanced business um, until you can get yourself and digital actually becomes a larger portion of, of it. When I say digital, by the way, just everybody, that's social, that's website, that's making sure that, you know, uh, that you're, you know, that you have some sort of channel to bring people or get eyeballs around it. So um, I don't know who would like to answer that. Um, I'll, I'll go with any one of you that would like to talk about what it is that your digital or social plan looks like amongst with what you're doing with your party schedule and your business. I'll jump in real quick. 
Yep. I I feel like when it comes to um, staying in front of them with with what you sell or your products and all of that, um, I know that I've run into a lot of consultants that say that they don't want to connect with people on social media because that's where my my kids' pictures are, or blah blah blah. Um, but I would rather be looked at as their friend um, than just the sales lady. So I want them to see me post the pictures of my kids. I want them to see that I'm a mom and I'm at a football game on a Friday night, and that's why I couldn't party tonight. Like. I want them to see that side of me because it makes me more of a person to them than just somebody that, you know, that ended up on their Facebook. Um, but I will also say that my social media pages have all become places where I drop seeds. Um, I'm constantly and consistently sharing the products that I use on a daily basis because I'm selling it. Why would I not be using it? So I am, I am my first customer. So they see me consistently using these things, right? And I, I'm just going to kind of go off to the left for a little bit. But no, when no. I'm consistently posting the products that I'm using, and I, and when I say that I'm posting them, like I'm talking about how a real quick just applied my cocoa glow, like you know, or just yep. wash my face, like little things like that. And it's not like who needs face wash. It's literally just just a picture of my face wash, like just just clean my face from the day, and that's it. So then what happens is when I send out my super simple birthday messages. They've seen all of these products that I'm using. And part of my birthday message is, have you seen me post a product that you're interested in? And it's a real casual, like no pressure type of way. You know what? Tell me a little bit more about that no funks given. I saw you post that the other day. Like I'm dropping seeds consistently so that when I do pop in their inbox and it's on their birthday. So you get a message from everybody on your birthday. Like I, you get an email from Old Navy and, and Macy's yep. and, and you don't get pissed off at them. So stop thinking that people are going to be bad at you when you're in their inbox, right? Because you get excited when you get that, that DSW $10 coupon. Do the same for your clients. They're not mad when you offer a coupon for their birthday. Um, but now when I jump in their inbox, they've seen me post all of these products that I haven't necessarily gone live about or really done like a big to-do over but they've seen me consistently using them. And they're like, well, shit, she's using this every day. It's got to be good. So I'm my first customer, but I'm also the face of my business. So a lot of my posts will include me like holding a product because I want them to remember that I'm the one that they saw with that product. Um, but I also just want to say one last thing. When it comes down to it and you think about it and you want to host a party for Avon or, or I don't even know who still does. I feel like nobody asked me to, be, to book a party with them. It's crazy. Anyway. So when you think about a company you want to do a party with, are you going to book a party with someone who never talks about their business on social media? Or are you going to book a party with somebody who always talks about their business on social media? I would rather go with the girl who's obsessed with what they sell than the girl that talks about it here and there at the end of the month when they need a sale. I, I, I'm at the point where in my life, I'm going to talk to people that are actually come across as experts of what they sell. And meaning that that's where I'm at in my world right now. It's like, you know, when you're using your stuff that you're, that you're out there talking about and you actually are knowledgeable of that stuff, I'm in, I, I want to do business with you. you it, that's, that's the thing. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. I think that gets away from so many people. So that's an important piece. Let, let me ask this question. Cause this came up too in the chat tonight. And I love that. I, by the way, I love that how active you guys are in the chat tonight. Cause it's kind of good. Cause it's given me some, some direction on, on some of this too is um, let's see. I think it was LaShonda Griffin at nine fifty three said, you know, thank you. All good ideas. I'm taking notes. I'm trying to build, you know, and it's been a long time, not making money really. Okay. I want to build. Okay. Let, we got to help her out. And I think all of us are going to be pretty honest because I picked this group for a reason tonight um, because one, it, none of you guys really sugarcoat. I know that about you, which is great. All of you are very successful. All of you have kind of went through ups and downs in the business, which is great as well, right? It's like you started, restarted, you've had your kind of whatevers, right? Um, the, the one thing, and, and LaShawn, I'm going to tell you, and then they, they, they can come back and they could give you whatever. Uh, the only way you're going to make money in this business, and, I, and I'm going to tell you, if you're not consistent in this, and that's why nobody likes this. I just decided, I was like, you know what? I, I, I'm not going to bullshit people about like the money that they can make. If you're not consistently doing $3,000 minimum a month, right? You have to really evaluate. Like if you're selling $3,000 a month, you're making a thousand. It's without a doubt, 
you should be making a thousand dollars. Now, areas that your ass is going to get burned. If you're carrying too much stuff, right? You're buying the wrong stuff, right? You're buying things that maybe you like, but your customers do not like. That's where you get burnt. Um, that's why I think with some people, they need to go do their shows, then find out what, they, because it's kind of like, if you come across and you really like something, most likely your customer is going to buy it. If you talk passionately about it, like, you know, you just heard AB talk about like, hey, I'm going to go out there and this is what I use. This is what I like. It typically will come across in a presentation. It'll come across on what you're doing online. But where I see a lot of people not making money is one, they're, they have a very inconsistent habit with the business. That's number one. The second reason I see people not making a lot of money is they don't know what to purchase, right? They're purchasing things that they shouldn't be purchasing, you know, and I, and again, you know, I don't know your purchase history, but I could go through it, take a look at it. Um, you know, don't just buy sales because sales are there. Buy the things that are going to really be things that will that will move for you. Um, but being consistent, if you do not have at least three thousand dollars a month in sales, you're probably not going to see much money because you're going to sit back and go, you know what, man, I'm only making a couple hundred bucks a month with this business. You know, that's really not. By the time you make a couple hundred bucks, you know, it's time, maybe gas that you put in your car, or all the other stuff that goes around it. It's that fast and it's gone. You're going to be like, shit, this is not working for me. Um, I see too many people that just take a small bite of the apple and not a big enough bite to actually taste it. And that's just what I see a lot. So I don't know if anybody wants to jump in. I could be off base. That's just what I've seen for my 25 years. I will say if you're doing something and you're not seeing results, freaking change what you're doing. I, so many times are people are, I am so consistent in my business. I just don't have any sales. Why are you still doing whatever it is you're doing? There are so many trainings and so many things that you can just pivot, pivot and change. Because yeah. if it's not working, stop doing it. I'll real talk it right here because you said we could. Yeah. But what about like, maybe it's you. Maybe yeah. you're a cranky ass human. Like maybe every post you make is negative and crappy. And maybe that's why nobody wants to party with you because you're a buzzkill. Like, ugh. Like, yeah. maybe it's that. Maybe you're I, just not hey, you, I don't know. No, you know what? I somebody asked me, they go, you know, we don't see you, you don't get on social. And to be honest with you, it's kind of funny. I told somebody this. I was at whatever city. I was like, I just really didn't have anything nice to say to anybody. So it's better for me just to stay off of it. Right. And, and I stay off of it. And that's what I did. I was like, all right, you know, I need to make sure that I was, you know, everybody's like, you know, when are you going to come back out? When are you going to start doing stuff? You know, when are you going to be, you know, I'm like, uh, when I'm ready. Cause if I do come out and I come with the attitude that I had, it probably wouldn't, I probably would have been the cranky bitchy, you know, whatever it was. And I was like, it's probably not, it's probably not good for me to do that. Right. So that I, I work and that could be something, right. It is kind of like the excitement that you push off, you know, it is the kind of the way we, we, we come at things. And again, you know, and, and we just picked up on one comment, you know, there, there, there are thousands of people and we don't know uh, what everybody's business looks like. These are just some things of, of tips of what we've seen in, in, in business over the years. And, and I will say, I do go back to the simple fact, um, be ready to go on Instagram, be ready to go on Facebook, be ready to go on your TikTok, be ready to talk about the stuff. You know, it, it, when you, when you kind of attend something, show up, like you actually give a shit about like what you're wearing and what you, you know, you look like. I mean, I know people think that people don't look at that stuff. They, they really do. Cause they're going, do I want to do business with that person? And, um, and that's, and that's very evident. Like, I know one thing that just completely turns my mother off every time we go to an event, she hates the fact, right. Cause she sees the heart, the logo, the everything that we have. And, you know, she rolls up into a thing and there's 40 people outside smoking cigarettes, you know, doing all the different stuff. And she's like, we're talking about hygiene, sex. We're talking about intimate product. We should not be puff puff giving at any type of event. If you want to go do that, go find somewhere else to go to. But that's just that's the stuff we got to be remembering is that all the little things that we do have to be thought through. Those are reasons that we don't make money. That's reasons sometimes people don't book. That's reasons why some people don't want to do business. But 
But those are things that I think all of us need to be aware of as we are kind of, you know, building things and, and doing that. It goes to my next question, which I think is a very important one, which is, you know, you look at this and, and everybody kind of sleeps on this, which is, you know, keeping your business going, right? Like, all right, let's be honest. Once you start getting going and you get that first kind of party, if it's at your house, if it's an event, if it's whatever, how is how important is it or what is your focus when you're at that party to make sure that you walk out with a potential next party or a confirmed next party or an event consultation, whatever you might want to call it? How important is it to you and how do you kind of do your best to secure that? And I'll go with Kayla first on this. Kayla, is there, you know, kind of in your mind, um, you know, a thought around how do you secure that? How do you go after that? How do you get it? What, what would be some of the things that you do? Or do you even really pay attention? Or are you just that good that everybody goes, I'm just going to book with her? Oh, no, no, no. Everybody needs to be doing a booking game at every single party. That is more important. That's the longevity of your business. I would rather have small sales and book parties than a $2,000 party with, a, you know, of sales and didn't book any parties because where are you going tomorrow? So we do a booking game at every single party. And if nobody does that, we're going to pivot and we're going to spend a little bit more time on it. You know, whether it's incentivizing them. Okay. I'm going to up my game a little bit to incentivize them to book, I will leave the party with at least one booking, even if we're calling your mom on the phone to do to get you a free coochie. <laughs> yep, I love it. Uh, Andrew, what's your thoughts around that? Also, like the main goal is to book parties. Totally agree with you, Kayla. I mean, I want sales and parties, if I'm being completely honest, because I want okay. the, the fast money and I want the future money. Um, but I actually went through my bin and found like one of my old little booking boxes. So I used to go to the Dollar Tree and get the little gift. They have the cute little gift boxes. And what I would do is I would have the gift boxes with me in the shopping room. Um, and inside of the gift boxes, I would tell them if they pick a date, they get to pick a box. And inside of the box, I would cut a picture out of a catalog and tape it to the inside. And they would get that at their party. So I'm not spending money. I'm not giving, I'm not losing money because I'm not giving them the product right there. So I'm not going to lose the money by potentially not, them not keeping, keeping the party. Um, but I also do this thing or would do this thing where when three people book a party, my hostess gets an added a hundred dollars to shop at the end of the third party. So all three parties have to hold for her to get her extra hundred dollars. And what do you think she's going to do to help me make sure those parties hold? She's going to be on her friends. She wants that main attraction for a hundred bucks. She wants a hundred dollars off main attraction. And I'm fine giving that to her. After the third yep. party, I'm totally fine giving her a hundred dollars in free stuff. That was it. that was my back to basics moment. I went through my totes and I was like, oh my God, okay. And, and I think that that's, and that's good to revisit things that have worked, things that haven't worked, things that you could change, things that you could do different. I think all of those things are, are hugely important. Jenny, what, what is yours? So I think that um, I, I guess secret sauce would be is they had a great time. My parties are funny. They're laughing, but they that. also, <laughs> they also learn a lot of things and they'll come out and they'll be like, this was the best party I've ever been to. And I'm going to take advantage of that. Like, as soon as I hear that, I know I'm in and um, I'll be like, okay, well, are we going to get one set up for you? So I guess it's just asking for me. Um, but even if they don't book, I'm not like super pushy or like, I don't even ask more than one time. I just ask the once because I know my follow-up is good enough that the next day at 4 PM, they're getting a text from my system anyway, that's going to ask them, yep. Hey, do you want anything else at 25% off? And did you think about a party? So what I have in place, I mean, I always book parties two or three days after the party. And it just kind of works out like that. Love it. All right. So let's talk about this because I think it's important. I love what Kathy Kay said is that kind of dressing as a nonverbal authority of like, it is, it is how you show up, how you look, you know, um, it is, it is an important thing. And I think 
how we show up at, at Zooms, how we show up at business, how we show up at people's, all of these things are hugely important, right? I mean, you're a business owner. That's kind of have to, we have to think about that. Like there are times that, you know, like tonight we're here, we're going through things. We've got a lot of stuff to kind of, you know, talk about. Everybody's here because they're like, Hey, how do I get better? How do I, how do I perform with what it is? I want to be able to make money. I love what I'm doing. Cause you know, I do think that that's important. Like you got to love what you're doing, right? There's going to be bad times of any time of business. There's going to be bad times in our economy, bad times and things like that. But when we come and you put yourself in the, in the mindset of like, okay, I'm dressed, I'm ready to go. I'm mentally, you know, here in this moment to take and absorb as much as I possibly can. Uh, it does help. It does, you know, it does put you in that learning state, that, that state that you're like, Hey, I'm, I'm ready to take it on. I got one final question because we're coming up on time. We're at seven minutes over and I apologize to everybody, but I think we had such good conversation. We will definitely do this again. Only if you want to, we have to see the chat. I think we have some really good conversations around how do we continue to continue to be uh, authoritative in what we do, authoritative in product, authoritative and being confident enough to ask people for business. Uh, we spent just a little bit of time around the kind of the digital world of our business. I think we can come back to that next week and really kind of dive in with a panel around what it is that you can use from a digital perspective, social perspective to really complement your business, right? We talked a lot about event tonight, a lot about parties, because I do think that that is where most people are at. Most people are at a place that they need to be able to make money. They need to make money in a fast way. They want to provide a great service. They know they have got, got great products. Um, also, overcoming all of these doubts, not enough inventory, don't know what to say, how to really be able to do it. Um, kind of final question of the night for kind of all of you as, as we kind of get into this is, you know, kind of what is your best advice uh, from your early days in your business that you would give to a new consultant, somebody that's trying to upgrade their business, somebody that's sitting back going, you know, I want something new. Um, what is that kind of early advice that you would give to them that they can take tonight, think about, kind of stew on and set goals, set whatever it is to, to get the first couple of things. And, and I'm challenging everybody. My, my, my one to you before I close out is um, put yourself in a position not to be second. It's going to be put yourself in the position to be first. Put yourself in a position that you can go make money, you know, because that that is going to be important. Now, I know you're going to move the goalposts. You're going to start off with, I want to make 500 on a month or whatever, and then it's just not going to be enough, Right. Give yourself the ability, though, of taking a really uh, deep dive and saying, I want to know what I do business with the person that I'm looking at in the mirror. Does the person that I'm looking at in the mirror inspire me? Um, would I follow them, right? Would I, you know, do they have good advice? Are they going to get back to me? Are they going to give up if, you know, if I say no to them one time? Are they just going to quit, be done, whatever it might be? Um, would I do that? And I think you have to put yourself in the position to win, the position to be uh, a better version of yourself. And coming here tonight was was great, right? We have a lot of people that were able to tune in. They'll post this tomorrow. More people will watch it. Um, it's good advice. But let's go. We'll go kind of around the horn. We'll start with Andrea talking about you know what it is that you would give to yourself, kind of that advice. Um, well, my advice would be that you have to touch your business every single day in some way, um, even if it's something as small as posting a photo of the uncovered skincare line. I keep going back to that because that's the only thing I'll put yeah. on my face. But you have to touch your business every single day. Um, and the main reason that I say that is because it's really easy to set it down and never pick it back up because we are a volunteer workforce. So if you do something every single day, and the one thing that I've done every single day this year that I'm very proud of, because it took me forever to implement any type of birthday system, but every single day this year, I have sent a birthday message to everyone on my Facebook group, on my Facebook page. But so I've made it a point to do that every single day, even when I don't feel like it. But my advice is that if you don't touch it every single day, it's really easy to go two days, three days, four days, a week or two without doing any business. And then the end of the month is here and it's like, oh shit, what do I do now? Then you look like the desperate one in their inbox. But my opinion is you have to do something for your free business. Every, it doesn't have to be a, a full eight hour shift. It can be something as easy as five, 10 minutes to send that message and, and you can chill. But I think it's just important that you do something every single day, touch it every day. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. All right, Kayla, what's yours? 
do not wait until you think you know enough. You know, we pure romance training is like a fire hose. You know, it's, it is, there's so much and you can get overwhelmed with, well, I don't know all this. I don't, don't wait to know because you will be, it's, it's paralysis by analysis, the whole thing. Just jump out there and just start. You will learn as you go. And if you need, if you need those note cards, you know, my first party, I was reading off the of note cards. I had all the toys set out there, right? And the first one said opening act. And I was like, oh my God, hang on. Somebody give me a, a which one is that? <laughs> I, was, I knew nothing, nothing. Sold $550 on my very first party, knowing nothing, okay? So this, you don't need to know it all. Just jump out there, have the nerve to step outside of your comfort zone. Love it, love it. Jenny. Okay, so mine is going to be to treat it like a business from the beginning. And I know like, this is fun and we sell sex toys and it's such a great time, but like you still started a business. So you still, even if that's not your natural, you still got to treat it like a business. I mean, I had no idea that six months after I started my business, I was going to be quitting my job. Like, well, I actually wanted to go to a training and they told me no, but I went anyway. <laughs> and then when I came back, I was shit camp. I was fired, but it was <laughs> fine. It was fine because my business was already built up and great anyway at that point. So it wasn't a big deal. Like it was cool, but like, treat it serious. Like act like this is your job because if you want it to be, it's never going to get that way on its own. And then I guess a second thing would be like, don't quit unless you know, you're just done. Like, like don't ever quit. I mean, if you have a bad month, like don't, there's some people in the chat that are like, Oh, I'm not doing good. Or I'm doing so bad. Freaking change it. Like yep. make the choice and just change it and, and don't quit. The only way that you're going to fail is if you quit. I mean, I know I am always going to keep trying. I'm going to fight. I'm going to do it all the time. Like I'm in, you guys got to kind of get that attitude with it because the only, I mean, quitting is just crazy. You've seen all of these stories you guys hear. I mean, freaking Lilia, right? You guys have heard her story. Like I mean, it's insane. You know, it works now make it work for you because you totally can't. Speaking of her, she's on tonight, right? She stays a student of her game. She's constantly, you know, attending things. I mean, she sells a couple million dollars a year and she still is here, right? That tells you that you got to constantly be learning, right? You got to constantly be kind of putting the time in and doing that because you never know when you find that one nugget, right? You find that one thing or that one piece of motivation that you need to continue to keep going. I, I think it's an important thing. Like tomorrow, you know, I, I do get excited for things like a new product launch that, you know, we're dropping and something that's easy. I mean, it's, you know, uh, the, the, the trio pack, right. Of new lubricants, the dessert trio that we got. We also got, you know, red velvet, you know, whipped, we've got little things that kind of keep kind of going back and for you to be able to interact with your clients. But I do go back. I think, you know, Andrew says it best, right? Like get excited about the products that you use, talk about that, be able to be mindful around what it is that your customers are looking for. Be that person that, you know, you want to wake up and say, I want to do business with that person. That's an important thing for each one of us to kind of take away for today. I know we're 15 minutes over for tonight, but I do want to tell you, one, I appreciate everybody tuning in. I will be putting a panel together next week to talk a little bit about digital and, you know, how do you take what this amazing group talked about with parties and keeping that on? And then how next week, how do we, how do we form this into like, all right, I've gotten the parties. I'm starting to get booked. Well, what should I really in the basic form, basic to start out with a communication plan? Like, what does that look like? The first and most important thing is go out there, put the parties on the schedule, go out there, talk to people, get those consultations, get the things that you need to get done, because that's what this group was here to talk about tonight. And then this upcoming week, we'll really dive into doing some other stuff, which is how do you now go from that digital perspective? If you can help me with in the chat, just give this group of women a, a big a round of applause. They are an awesome group. Um, some of my favorites that, that are out there. Uh, I, I love keeping it real. Um, and I appreciate everybody tuning in tonight. Have 
have so much fun this weekend. Uh, be talking about your business. Be an advocate. Be there and making sure people know exactly what it is that you do and that you have something that can help them, something that they'll be excited about, something to make them laugh, something to make them kind of take their business to another level, their relationship, whatever it might be. So uh, commit to the process. Remember that. Detach from the outcome. Have a great night. Thank you, everybody, for attending. And we will get next week, same probably time, same channel. We'll be talking a little bit more about digital and how to put that into your into your schedule. For all you that reached out and said, hey, you know, you this was good for your business. I appreciate that. I think it's awesome for you that were nervous. Hopefully we've taken away those nerves. And for those that sit back and say, you know, I'm ready to build, I'm ready to remodel. Everybody in this chat, everybody in the company wishes you much luck, success. And, uh, and we uh, we're putting good juju, good vibes out for you. Have a great night.